crack on with whatever was going on last night. Is there, there's there two worlds left, I think. So nice foreground layer there. Can I go up there? I was sitting down today and trying to figure out what sort of games I want to play going forward with this, but it's a pain in the ass trying to do anything on my computer at the moment. I want to obviously dip into some more sports games and strategy games because we were neglecting them. Can't do too many platformers. Oops. Actually, maybe that's the correct way then. So what's the other way? Oh, fudge. I've got 13 lives. Oh, there's a TV. Problem is with some of those, like... I don't necessarily always mind playing the sports games or whatever, or the strategy games, but not only are they long-winded sometimes and tedious, but they're also the hardest to sort of learn like how to do them like the manuals are usually rather long the sports games because there's a lot of detail to know say and strategy games are an absolute beast what was it i looked at it oh, i was looking at theme park although i vaguely know how to play theme park anyway but looking at theme park and the manual's like 60 pages on a pdf so that's that's a lot a lot of reading and to be honest, I don't, I've never played Theme Park properly. I don't actually really know all the nuances of it. You know, with like the, uh, they've got the finance tables and stuff that you can tinker with. Because as a kid, I just built a theme park and didn't pay attention. I think I usually probably lost, but I just had fun building a theme park. I don't think I ever did the, um, the objectives. I didn't really understand it. What is that slime? Is that deadly? Yes. Hmm. See, his jump is very weird. Like, with momentum, he seems to be able to jump further than normal but it's kind of hard to gauge can I make it or not he loved theme park as a kid I did too but I, like I said I didn't actually I don't think I like I, I don't even know if I have it because you clear theme you buy like land don't you or something and then you move on to the next place like once you've fulfilled an objective I don't think I ever did a single one I just had fun building it what do you want me to do here uh, oh, I'm gonna die getting that uh, whatever as long as I get to keep it I played a lot of Roller Coaster Tycoon as well. I was a bit older then, though. I don't remember how that one worked. If that was the same. The only thing I remember with Theme Park was having the um, the world map. Where, and do you, don't you start off in? I don't know if you start off in the UK or not. Mickey Mouse Roller Coaster Tycoon. You love making the rides. Which one did you play? I played it. Oh, I I played Theme Park on the Mega Drive. That's the only way that I ever I've ever played Theme Park. That's where all my nostalgia is for it. Play Theme Hospital on the PlayStation. Maybe PC. Theme Park PC. Is that the DOS one? That'd be like the same. I was reading today though, I think they added rides on the Mega Drive one. Because there was all those, there was like new theme park or whatever I think too. I want to get the ones on the Sega Saturn for fun. Because there's, there's two, there's, a, there's like a Japanese exclusive one. And there was that theme park 3D whatever it was. Theme park world? I never played that. Ooh. Yeah. 
What is this fire? Like, why do I want this fire? Oh, it means I can do the double thing. Oh, it's probably to get that then, isn't it? My only irk with Theme Park on the Mega Drive is I don't think it really has any music, which is a bit annoying. Oh, have I missed that? Did that letter respawn is not grabbed? That's annoying. Oh, well. Oh, it's only to get a stupid life, anyway. I'd have died trying to get it. It only has that music thing when you go past the rides. That's rather close to Tycoon. What was the theme park music? I always remember the, the Skull House thing. I think it was the Haunted House. That's a really iconic ride for me on that game. That's the one I remember having the most. And the Helter Skelter. And there's teacups as well. I don't remember really ever making a proper big roller coaster though. Mind you, I think I think there must have been cheats because I didn't play the game properly. But I bet you there was like cheat codes that you could put in. I probably did that. Unlocked all the rides. I remember not. I think I remember not understanding how to make one or two of them work. Maybe it was the roller coaster. She had to be like the supports and stuff. I mean, when I was playing, I was only like, I don't know, seven or something. Oh shit, there's an extra line. Theme Park Roller Coaster. There was that weird one on PlayStation 3, up two. Was that it? Where it was all it was all roller coasters, and it was like the novelty that they said was like you can go around your roller coaster in full 3D. I think my my best friend had it. I never really played it though. When I lived with her for a bit, she had it on the PlayStation. It wasn't made by the same company though, was it? Why is this guy here? Oh. Ah. Hmm. Oh. What's your weak spot? Yeah, I keep forgetting I got these stars. What do you want from me, Doc? Do I just need to survive? Oop. What is going on? I, I, I don't see a hitbox. A hurt box. It's like following me now. Let's just try and stay alive. Woo! Oh, what is that crap? Is that button significant, I wonder? Yeah. 
really hard to not get hit when it's doing that. What the hell is going on? Garbage. <laughs> oh, hang on. See, it's tracking. It's tracking my bloody body movements. It makes it really hard to avoid. Is this? <laughs> See, I'm not even sure. Oh, oh, my God, this is so poorly telegraphed. So I can hit it. Maybe only when it's right at the top. I swear I tried that and it hurt me. Bloody jank. Ridiculous. Never. That one completed. Took a lot of lives. I definitely got that arm. passwords at the end of the day but I'm just annoyed that I have 13 lives and they've all gone stars left. What? Was I lose them all? When I finally remember I can use them. Fish.
I mean, this don't look promising, does it? Go on. Oh! I pressed down. It did something. An eyeball. Oh, get lost. I do miss his little float in the air move that he did in the first game. I'm sure that you could hover, like a hover move in place. I mean, it wasn't that useful, but it would have been good for like that boss a minute ago, some strategy. It also gives you pause to think for a minute in the air. Oh. Oh, that's the bonus round. I want to get that. I'm still saying that on the whole, this has really not been bad. I don't know if I'd be in a rush to replay, but it hasn't upset me. Wish jumping's a bit a bit poor though. Doesn't seem to quite connect. Oh for goodness sake. Stuck now. I want to get that bonus. Uh. Hey, wait, is this just back to the star? I only go in there? Hmm. Wash bay. Yeah, I've been here. Well, it gives me another chance at least. I want to get up there somehow. No idea where we are now, though. Oh, there it is. That's what I wanted. And there's a chance. I'd like that too. Not that. Not where am I now? There's an enemy. Alive, that means we've not been here. Oh, they always put stuff out of reach. And there's probably a way, but oh, I've got to fall down. Woo! Wow. around the Super Nintendo version fares compared to this. I heard somebody yesterday said it's harder. I wonder why. I hear that a lot recently. SNES version's harder and sometimes it sounds like it's just because it's jankier. Oh. Sure. 
what? How the heck? What? The that is some real shit telegraphing. That's a hazard. I thought it was just a background fucking feature. Did it need to be instant death? Okay, just turn it down a bit. Rude. Really? What? Oh. Do I want to go in here? I want that chance room. I need to get some extra lives. Okay, well that's the, the right way to go. Let's go the wrong way. Oh, wow. I don't want to trigger that. <gasps> Ooh! I just want the life. Oh, no! Is that chance room? Oh, there was health right there. I'm feeling the crunch now because of that boss taking all my lives. Lands in going in the same place. Well, that's fine. Oh. Suns have published this. Um, that it's a I don't really understand it. They did, yes, is the short answer, but I feel like they had a hand in it too. It 
it's made by Iguana. I feel like it's West, so this is Western developed, but it, I think it's backed by a Japanese company. And I think they sort of at one point, they kind of wanted Aero the Acrobat to be their mascot because they used Aero with the Sunsoft logo in places. So. I don't really know the ins and outs of it all, but I kind of feel like it's not just they published it, but it's, I mean, I think it's almost like, you know how, like, you associate Tomb Raider with IDOS, even though Core made it? I feel like it's like that almost kind of thing. Like, Tomb Raider was very much an IDOS brand, even though they didn't actually develop it. I feel like it's that sort of a deep level of connection. If that makes any sense. That's that's how I have it down in my head. Because I think they were definitely pushing the idea of Aero the Acrobat and then it didn't obviously do very well. Because you'd see in adverts and stuff too, I think like in magazines maybe. I'm sure that you'll see. I would, my image is always the Sunsoft logo with like Aero peeking out behind it. I remember seeing. But... They definitely didn't actually develop it. I think they probably sent it to an American division or something. It had a Game Boy port as well, the original one. What else did Iguana do? Do you know, if you're looking at the page, what else did they make? I know that I, I recognise the logo. You know, I've seen it before, but I can't remember what from. It can't be this, because I didn't play with the Acrobat growing up. So it's the Iguana with the sunglasses on. NBA Jam, that's it. That's definitely where I know the logo from. No, it's NBA Jam. I played that quite a bit growing up. Pirates of Dark Water. I'm familiar with it, but I haven't really played it. I know the show, but I haven't played the game much. Zero, yeah, Zero's, Zero's part of this u the universe. Zero's the baddie in Era of the Acrobat, and then he got his own game. The NBA, yes, it must be NBA. I did play quite a fair bit of NBA Jam, so I'd have seen that logo more than once. Oh, I'm still, I'm scared to to come back to NBA Jam because I've really thought I've never ever touched NBA Jam in about what year is it now i'd say i haven't played nba jam in about 25 years more last time i played nba jam was probably about 1996 95 and i was i really liked it but i'm very worried that i might revisit it now and it's not good anymore <laughs> yeah it's one of those you know because it's a sports game you just don't think to go back to it you know and you're like oh yeah streets of rage yeah let's give that a go remember that don't really sit down and think like oh remember nba jam i mean i'm saying i, I remember i'm talking about that now but you know once uh virtual consoles and stuff became a thing i wasn't desperately hunting down nba jam but i liked it at the time Oh, my God. 
There's a couple of sports games I'd, I'd play again for fun. I'd replay Arnold Palmer's Tournament Golf. Can we not explode you? Yeah. But it didn't, but that one we all... Yeah, everybody liked NBA Jam. It's because it didn't require you to be super into sports to have a good time with it, you know? It was very pick up and play. I knew, I knew bugger all about basketball. Oh, there it is. And it had that arcade kind of quality to it, and it was very infectious with its sound bites and stuff. Boom, shakalaka, and all that. But as I've been revisiting, well, or not revisiting, but as I've been playing some of these sports games, oh, that's garbage. It has made me remember how... All that for one fucking life? You must be joking. Oh my god, I'm going to die trying to get out. What the hell? Oh, bore off. Chance my arse. Am I going the right way? Oh. Yeah, re right, playing some sports games, the mentality of playing them reminded me of how a lot of them, you really could just not be into sports and still have an okay time with some of them. Less so the EA ones, because they wanted a bit more realism, but... I definitely played some football games when I was a kid, and I hated football, but I played the game. And I do I remember playing golf. I haven't touched the um, the proper EA golf games yet though, but there was definitely one I played as a kid, but I don't know which one it was. It's probably PGA Europe or something. EA Wants Boys Tears. They're not all bad. I don't know what you mean though. I think I've I found myself getting into the basketball ones. The problem with the EA ones is it's all presentation. Have we really got to do this fight again? I don't have lives for this shit. Yeah, they just, they seem allergic to music and stuff. I mean, the best ones for me were the ones that actually put effort in in that way. I like Team USA basketball that had like gorgeous pixel art and music bits and stuff. Takes what's his hands seriously. Oh, the health didn't recharge, that's good. Oh, fuck off! game have fun it's in the game i'm not sure i'm gonna make it through this act intact free ban oh thanks i think that's an extra life Oh, I need the life. Where is it? Well gone. Oh, come on. What the hell is that? <laughs> he, like, changed with the magic ability thing, like, four times in a row or something. I'm like, oh, I don't bloody know.
Oh, look at me. I, uh, I quite enjoyed aesthetically bonus act. Oh. I quite enjoyed the, um, what was it, Tony Robinson that I just did? But the decision to have the camera angle change every time you go over the halfway line was appalling. I don't know if you saw that one, but that was a real, a real weird choice. It's interesting though, because that point in video games, some of these rules hadn't been set in stone yet, so you got to kind of forgive them for their experimentation. They're trying to like be different, aren't they, and do something that makes them stand out. Because it's the same with Roger Clemens' MVP baseball, the choice that when you pitch the ball, it then changes to the point of view of the fielders, but it's incredibly disorientating. There's a reason that all of the baseball games use like fixed cameras and stuff. But Roger Clemens tries all these multi-angle approaches, and I sort of applaud the effort for trying something new, but it doesn't work. And I mean, we probably learned from that and moved on with our lives. And it's probably the same with Tony Robinson. It was a cool idea, but it's miserable in execution. They probably thought it was being dynamic. I like the perspective of Tony Robinson, but there was just no need to flip the uh, flip the core. It should have just been. They should have let you choose if you want to flip it or not. And then everybody's happy. But I loved the music. What the hell is this? And the graphics were pleasant. Early isometric games. Hey, Smudgy Bear. Ooh. I don't mind isometric that much. I don't dislike it as much as other people make out. It depends on how, how well it's done, like the genre as well. Like, I'm not so keen on Landstalker's isometric controls, but Light Crusade is fine. I mean, Shadowrun is... Would you say Shadow Run on the Super Nintendo is technically isometric, and that's fine. In fact, I think it works really well. The early ones are a bit clunky. Yeah, yeah, they did. Especially, when, I, I think isometric when it's stuck on a grid is a bit miserable. I don't know. You got points for these. I'm not sure why I'm getting points. Last Ninja. I don't know if I played that. What's that on? This is annoying. Can we just not? Oh, I do know that game then, I think. Last Ninja C64. Oh yeah, I played that. Oh my god. I couldn't do it. It was so hard. Oh wow. I'd love to see somebody else play that. The one I want to revisit is um Fox Fox Strikes Back. I used to play that on the C sixty four. Great Guiana sisters. Solstice. Is that the one with the turban? Well, that's Equinox, isn't it? I never played any of those early isometric games like that. There's there's a modern one that you can play. Was it Loom? Loop? Loon? Room? I don't know. It's on PlayStation. Lumo, that's it, yeah. I played it a little bit on PlayStation Plus. It seemed quite fun. Like it seemed like a throwback, but it but in an improved way. Which is what you want, really. Yeah. Well, maybe I have it on PS4 actually. I don't know. 
Wait, it wasn't on. Was it? Was it on PS3? It must be PS4 that I had it on. But it was on. I think it was on the PlayStation Plus. Remember Lumo? I need to finish that Chris Tales. I don't know if I should do it in my own time though. I haven't played anything. You know, I've not streamed anything. I've not played anything either. I was playing Dragon Guard 2. I haven't finished that. Cog for like four quid. I've seen Quantum Player One stream a bit of that Batman game. It looked precious. It was, on the, was it on the Spectrum? Probably on other things too. Ooh, give me all those lives, yes please. Yippee. Yeah, there's an old Batman bomb. He's got a lovely sprite. Look at Batman on the s I think it was a spectrum. This music's interesting. Bit of a dirge. Sounds like Holsts, planets, Mars. Oh. Is it loud? Because I feel like the last two tracks have been louder than everything else. Is it alright? Let's see if we can say anyway, but. Do you know what I was picking of what games to play? Hey Peacock so how are you? Guess who's back playing all the greats? Not me. Well, were you here yesterday? A bit, I got a bit overwhelmed yesterday. So I kind of forgot who was here and who wasn't. We need to catch the train. We're going to be nice. We're talking about our isometric games. Came out in '86. Looks pretty cool. The Batman Strike is precious. Yes, that's that's what my memory is. Was it on the Spectrum? Play one of those Bubsy rip-offs. <laughs> This is definitely better than Bubsy, I'll give it that. It's better than Awesome Twats as well. What could possibly go wrong? It's easy for that version side scrolling. Ah. Uh. But what's Batman on the C64? I wonder if I ever saw that. That looks kind of familiar. Is it made by Funsoft? Ocean. It looks like they've copied some ideas there from the Mega Drive one, because there's like a top-down car shooting level. This looks like, yeah, like a weird port. I don't think I played it though. Go to Asda. Supposed to be really good, the specky one. I saw Quantum Player 1 playing some of it. I don't know if you ever finished it though. Oh. That wasn't worth it. Here's the jump as the 89 Batman. Oh yeah, because it's from the motion picture, so it can't be uh, before it was made. The uh, C64 one. I love the Megatron Batman.
Wow. Oh, I don't want to go over there. Give me that health. Oh, what is your problem? is really unsettling. I don't know why it's so sinister. You know, given credit where credit's due, this game has a lot of music. Like, I think every single act has had a different track. And bearing in mind it's all set in worlds and each world's three acts, they could have easily just used one track for all three stages. But they didn't. So, bravo. And on the whole, the music's been pretty good. I think it's got worse as the game's gone on, though. But the first line, there was a couple of tracks that really stood out as well. I need to add them into a playlist. I need to make a list a list of my playlist, though, because YouTube keeps deleting songs and what or whatever. And then, but you know when you've made a playlist? And, oh, my God. Fucking clown. When a song's been deleted, it's like it just says deleted video, and it's like I can't even remember what it was. Like what's missing? These these things have some really spiteful hitboxes trying to jump over them. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a hole. Hate that. At least how it used to be. I know it's so it's so irritating. Because I want to find it again. So I need to actually make a physical list as I do it, but I'm lazy. Because I'm always making lists of games that I like. Well, that didn't work at all, did it? Oh. Which one? The Batman game? Yeah, if you like, if you're interested in old British stuff, glyphics, there's a YouTuber, Kim Justice, which is Twitch as well, but she covers loads of niche British stuff. I mean, it's not even necessarily niche, it's just the fact that it's not American, nobody talks about it, you know. It's definitely British people know it. I find Slope's Game Room Games Room is quite good as well for that, from a British point of view, because I've seen him do a series overview of Dizzy. I mean, I don't usually talk about YouTubers and things like that, because most YouTubers, it's all sort of the same content. But I do like the fact that they cover British stuff. Even just, ma it's always a British perspective, and that's what I like, you know, there's like the magazines and stuff, because it's not to go in a whole tangent, but everything gets rewritten. Like video game history is always getting overwritten by the American point of view. It's like the, it's like even recently, you know, like happy anniversary for the Dreamcast. It's like yeah, only in America. You got all over the internet like 25 years of the Dreamcast. It's like for the North American release, yes, but not everywhere else. Maybe or whatever it is. It's, but everybody gets all programmed that way because that's what Twitter is and everything. I mean, it's nobody's fault, really. It's just the natural way things happen, but it is good to remember, because I'm guilty, too, of losing my own sort of radar for video games, because I was just watching... I think Angel was playing something, and what was it? Have a sip of coffee a second. Oh, we were watching something. Oh, it was a TV show. And it was, um, at video games, it was Bad Influence, a UK video game show. 
talking about what comes out. And, um, sometimes I enjoy watching streams from places in America, group here. I was there, I wanted the percentages. Yeah, it's interesting. Definitely. I mean, especially, that's why I find Techie Rob's always fascinating to have in chat because he's a bit older than me and I, I remember it more from a child point of view, whereas Techie Rob remembers it more from an actual critical, like the magazines and what the word on the street was at the time, whereas I just, it's my friends had it and I don't remember what people were say, saying about it. I couldn't tell you, like, what was critically acclaimed. I just played stuff. I sort of pieced it together later, but... I mean, I remember stuff like James Pond 2 was in a lot of magazines and, um, you know, you can remember the box had the review numbers on it. But, like, I don't remember what people thought about the Chaos Engine. Or Zero Wing. I don't remember Zero Wing existing. But anyway, what was I saying? Um... Yeah, so I was watching Bad Influence and they was they were talking about how a new Super Mario game is coming out in the UK or whatever in like I think it was like ninety six. And like when did that come out in everywhere else? Let me check myself. Nineteen ninety five it came out in Japan and it came out in America in October 95. It came out in the U UK in October 95. And Australia in December. So, I always forget, because I wouldn't have got Super Mario World 2 until probably late 96. Maybe even early 97. I don't know. I think I got it late 96 because I got it, it pre-owned. But my point is just that the way that the internet talks all the time, Twitter and stuff with dates and stuff, you know, like happy 30th, what is it, 40th, it will be soon, oh my god, no, 30th soon, so it will be like happy 28th anniversary to Super Mario 64, but really, I didn't play Super Mario 64 until like 98. I wasn't playing it in 1996, I didn't even, I don't even know anybody that had an N64 in 1996 and like I said I was I was still getting Super Nintendo games in 96 and 97 I didn't get a PlayStation until 98 and it's like people you know Tomb Raider yeah technically it came out in 95 or 96 but that's not really how I, don't, I think in the UK the leap to the PlayStation took a bit longer because it was expensive especially with kids I remember one of my friends getting a PlayStation and playing the Hercules demo and that would have been probably about 97 but I was still playing my Mega Drive Polish games the Amiga most of them were crap I don't know yeah I don't know Amiga at all. I really don't know the Amiga. I never ha had access to one. I think my neighbour had one and I played it once, but... The only stuff I know about Amiga now is mostly from watching Retro Demiurge playing Amiga games. And there's a lot of overlap with Mega Drive. Throat, sweet. So I have my Game Boy and 20 games to get a PlayStation. Just play Wipeout. Yeah, see, I was still old stuff then. I mean, I got, I think I got Light Crusader for Christmas 96 for the Mega Drive. And I was still playing my Game Boy well up to 90. God. I probably didn't get a Game Boy Color until like 2000 something. I got my Game Boy Color, in fact I can tell you when. When did Tomb Raider come out on the Game Boy Color? Because that was the first thing I got for uh, 2000, so it was after 2000 I got my Game Boy Color. Family Clones. Yeah, we do end up with history being sort of altered, warped and stuff. I mean, obviously the most infamous one that we can always bang on about is, um, you know, the great video game crash of 1980-whatever that 
apparently it happened everywhere because we have to always talk about it, but it didn't happen everywhere. It only happened in America. But there's also a totally different history of um, not consoles, like computers people played. I didn't play them so much because I'm younger, but like Commodore versus um, or Amiga versus Atari versus Amstrad. And I do feel like the Mega Drive was the bigger of the two in, in the UK, mostly because of affordability. The Mega Drive was huge in America, like, is the impression I do get, but I do feel like the Super Nintendo was also equally massive. Whereas I would say, me growing up in the UK, all my childhood friends had Mega Drives, and I was the only one that had a Super Nintendo. And it wasn't even mine, it was my older brother's, he bought it because he was working, so it was the only reason we had them. Might be an age thing with what was big and what wasn't too. Not sure if the Genesis also had a snare, so neither. What were you playing then? Honestly, the attacking diving thing just it just doesn't work. It's a terrible gameplay choice. Hello, hello. I'm doing some busy. There we go. Thanks for the raid, Mr. Cold Machine Gun. How are you doing? Um, what do we do? What do we do? There we go. Thanks so much, and thank you for the continued sub. Had to raid since I'm on. Thank you very much. Yes. You can check out that Peter Andre song now. That was a real deep memory unlocked. Because I could only think of two songs. But yeah, I hope the rest of your stream was good. Welcome in everybody else. We're playing more Mega Drive. Air of the Acrobat 2. It's a lot better than 1. Although, it's starting to get a bit rubbish, but to be fair, this is the end of the game, so it's allowed to be a little bit wobbly. I can't remember how many levels there are now. I think there's two more acts after this. Was it good? I did die a lot. It was a relaxing stream, because some good chats. I had fun. I took you all the way to the supermarket. I had you in my pocket. I was listening. Oh. Chat is what it's all about. His last death, I even warned him about. Hey, General Peters, how are you again? Whoops. Oh my goodness, there's so many choices. You know, at some point I'll have to play a fancy star game. We were talking yesterday, actually, and you might know this, because Australia has PAL signal, right? You had this 50 hertz thing, the same as the UK. I know it's still the same PAL region. So last night, watch out for that tree. <laughs> so I was playing Sonic 1 last night, it slowed down. 50 hertz speed. It was really, really something. The music was very nostalgic, but the gameplay was pretty dire. But we were talking about what other games were not optimised. Especially musically, because some of them, the gameplay would be slow, but they optimised the music so you didn't notice. Um, you know, like Sonic 2 was definitely optimised, because that sounds f fine. 
Doan was saying she reckoned Fancy Star wasn't optimised for PAL. And it probably wasn't. 1980... What? Uh, 1989? I wonder if the original Fancy Star 2 had slow music. Because you played it, didn't you? You rented it. Good question. Yeah, and the thing is, it's been so long, I've never thought to... You should try and listen to it at some point and see if it triggers a memory. Because I was trying to remember whether Castle of Illusion sounded slow or not, and I couldn't remember because I'm so normalised with playing it on modern methods. Sonic definitely jogs some old memories though, especially the Labyrinth Zone at 50 hertz. That I can definitely like remember that. Playing it emulated him, so yeah. Sonic is still there though, because I played it so much. I wonder if Fancy Star 3 was. 4 was probably optimised. See, we were just talking too, just before you raided him, about how that video game history gets warped with an American bias. We were saying about the Dreamcast, I was saying, you know, people are celebrating the 25th anniversary or whatever, but it's actually not for many other people, but the majority sort of says today's the day that we talk about the Dreamcast. But I think you were saying today that you're going to do Dreamcast in December because that's the anniversary in Australia. And I was just, um, we were just talking about different perspectives when you grow up in a different place. But sort of the majority online is all Twitter. But I bet compared to the UK, I bet Australian video gaming history is even more neglected. Although I feel like Australian video game history definitely lines up a bit more with the UK. Only had good things about Aero 2. Hey Surfings, how are you doing? I did not enjoy Aero 1. I find Aero 2 is better. I wouldn't I don't rave about it, but it's it's very playable. I'm kinda confused where to go right now though. Australia has a lot of BS censorship. Oh does it? I know it does now, but did it then? I know they made South Park. They have that crying koala. The UK got censored for South Park too, though. What's a notable example? I'd love to know. Part of Europe as far as Nintendo were concerned. Do you think... Did you get everything? Like, can you... Off the top of your head, can you think of anything that you didn't get that PAL region got? Like, did you ever get... You didn't miss anything crazy like a fun fantasy or something. Where the UK got one. Yeah, South Park got censored. But to be honest, I heard some of the censorship with South Park was um, self-done. It was almost like a joke. The UK, because you... They, and, and I like that they had... Um, was it a crying koala they had for, for, for America? I mean Australia. And then for the UK they had... Um, was it the Queen looking sad or something? In Europe they had the... Uh, I can't remember now. Well, maybe the UK was the same as Europe. I've had a two censor version for Australia turn on the violence. Germany censors stuff as well, I think, like that. Didn't miss anything the UK had. Let you know. Trying to ban various Grand Theft Autos. There's no point banning Grand Theft Auto. All you do is add to the infamy and people are just important. But yeah. I've been okay, Surfins. How have you been? 
Hey about Jet Set Radio? What? What, just because of graffiti? Sometimes you just gotta, you know, have a little bit of fantasy in your life. A tired bit of life. Oh yeah, you just did a whopping great bit, because I haven't really been on Twitch a lot lately. I've been, I haven't streamed for almost two months properly. I streamed once in the last two months, I think. And then as a viewer, I've not been on a super amount, but I do, every time I popped in, I could see that you were live and doing your massive long subathon thing. Was it happy four years? You're not still going, are you? <laughs> Oh, you mean me having a break? <laughs> I thought you were talking about yourself then. Gotta take a break. <laughs> How long did it go for in the end? Eight days, bloody hell. Do you know, I've done... I think the longest I've ever streamed is like... Oh, 16 hours, maybe? which I did recently. I remember doing, I'm playing, was it Grand Slam Masters at like oh, seven in the morning and I think I'd been on since like one in the afternoon or something. I was losing my shit. And I think if you don't do it, you think like, oh, how hard could it be? But it's not, I don't know what it is that gets me, but it's. I think it's just having headphones on for a long time. It's not really the, the staying up part, it's the sitting in one place for a long period of time and having headphones on and you just start to just get f that fuzzy feeling. It's particularly the headset that does my head in after like I just gotta get it off, it hurts my, it's hurting my neck and... Oh and the other thing is um, just talking, if you talk as much as I do anyway, you just, your voice starts going. So I was like that last night, but to the end, to, to be honest, towards the end of, I'd only be going five or six hours, probably because I haven't streamed in forever. I keep thinking this is a hole, but it's not, it's really deceiving. By the end I was getting, by the end I was getting, can somebody fix the grammar in that? By the end I was getting. I don't know what I want to say. By the end of Sonic, I, f I was getting tired, like my throat was hurting. Oh, tits. These fans, they really just look like background. Taint, I'm impressed with you for the blight of street art. No graffiti in Australia. Do you have a lot of graffiti in Australia? Like in the cities? Ah, uh, ooh! I knew I wanted to ask you something mystical. I was watching Angel intercept a stream yesterday. We ended up watching Australian catchphrase. And I don't think I've ever got so angry at a piece of television. <laughs> it was so terrible. Bur Bo what's his name? Burgess. Burgess catchphrase, I think you call it. You can, you can bloody keep it, it was terrible. I love the UK catchphrase of Roy Walker. But the Australian one. They were so convoluted and weird. Like, one of them was... It was like the, a town with a statue in the middle of it, you know, looking like the middle of Springfield or something, with the Jebediah Springfield statue. And there was a sign next to it, and it said, Welcome to Amal, I think. Amalga, welcome to Amalga. And then the statue was underneath, it said something like, In memorial of... of um, Tom Shun or something and the catchphrase is like amal amalgamation and I'm just like 
So you saw that one too, right? Because I was so angry. Like, I was like, this has got nothing to do with anything. It's literally just the word fucking Amalga on a sign. And the statue is Tom Shun. And the catchphrase is Amalgamation. Just like, why is it? I'm still not over it. This was stupid. Big waste of metal. Just made no sense. And it's like somebody was saying like, oh maybe they made them easier in Australia. But I'm like, honestly, I thought they were harder because they were so stupid and made no sense. I couldn't work them out. No Mr. Chips either. You're dropping a alert and going to bed. You missed my question. I was asking you about Australian telly, but I'll let you go to bed. It's not about Burgess, Burgess catchphrase. But thanks for the raid. Have a lovely rest. John Bur I don't know. Burgess, Bur Burgie, Burjo, his catchphrase. You know the UK quiz show catchphrase? I don't know, did you have it imported? But there was an Australian version too. I think actually originally it was American TV show, but it didn't take off in America, so there's only like one season, it got cancelled, and then the UK copied it and it was a huge success. Am I stuck here now? It's like a quiz show where you see stuff on a screen and you have to guess what it is, like an app, like a pictogram. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I forgot we've got a look button. Well, that would have been useful. I can't slide under. There we go. That's a life. I'd like that. Oh! I'd like that chance. Try checking our version since somebody mentioned it in chat. There's only a minute if it's on YouTube. What's your version? You don't mean the UK, do you? There's tons of it on YouTube. Unless it's all been purged all of a sudden. Polish? Yeah. Oh, you had a Polish catchphrase? How many seasons did it get, do you know? season what what it when was it was it like 80s or was it a newer one it's the american one was like 1980 something i watched an episode of it. it's actually quite good shame i don't know why it didn't take off in america to be honest and i'm also surprised that nobody's tried to give it another go ever since because it's it's a very easy formula i always thought catchphrase was a really good show because you know, like, when you just round someone's house and you want to put some telly on, it's, like, fun with friends and stuff. You can all just yell at, you know, shout at the TV and feel dead smog. 2000, that's late. Because some TV shows, I just feel like they're just, they don't really work that well. It's like, don't you know who wants to be a millionaire? I know it was a huge success, but, you know, when you look back on it, it does not fucking drag. Like, one question is, like, five minutes, ten minutes. The novelty at the start, though, was just... I think people enjoyed the peril. Yeah, it's so slow. Who wants to be a millionaire? So you can't enjoy it in a group sense of, like, everybody trying to get the answers in. Oh, my God. I hate these things. And we have Chris Tarrant in the UK, and he's doing his whole, um... We'll find out. But the answer is... 
I'll tell you after the break. Milk it all the time. Oh my god. Oh, this is the end. Uh, what is that? Hard to tell when. Millionaire in Poland. I feel like almost every country had that. Tasha said you would come. Oh, he's Dr. Dis. My name is Hans Dis. Dr. Dis to you. Franz, or whatever your name is. His name is Hans. Free Batasha right now, or I will. It's Hans, you red imbecile. Batasha is not here. Why are we shaking around like this? But you, my dear Aero, are just in time to witness. Is that the only time we're going to be not native English. My latest experiment contained with it, so you missed it then. My genetic alteration device is Das piece of your wing that Batasha gave me. <gasps> what a twist! Batasha's evil! Now that's right, I'm about to genetically engineer a formidable beast. I will name him Alter Aero. With Das flick off a switch and a press of a button, the final process will begin. Actung Aero, prepare to meet your most worthy opponents. Yourself. <gasps> Shocking. Boss Act. Dr. Dis Industries. Project Alter Aero. Is this Plan B? I kind of like the attempt to the story though. And this little cutscene is cool. We got no password though, have we? This is a problem. Oh! I've only got three lives to figure this crap out. It reminds me of Sonic. I have no idea when I can hit him. This is the problem with these bosses. So it's when he flies. For some reason the bosses in this game, you hit them when they try to hit you. But when they're standing still you can't hurt them. Right, well we're not going to pass. Oh, crap. 
dodge. Come on, don't have a phase two shit. What is he doing? Okay, he's got to catch me. Lovely. I didn't get a password, did I? I'm dead. Oh, one more life. Continues, but with passwords? Okay. Well, I'm going to take a break before we continue. Do not go away, or do. It's up to you, but I will be back in a few minutes.
where are we? It's quite chill this music. I don't know what gave me continues or if they're default, but like I kind of don't understand if it has passwords what difference it makes. Presumably this will allow me to start on the boss rather than the whole act. It is quite nice actually, this trap. Oh, the spotlight follows you. There's a lot of nice animation details in this game that I feel they didn't need to do. Look at that, that's a nice effect just for a continue screen. And we get the cutscene again, but no, we don't need it. Has he still got the same health? Oh no. Project Alter Aero. I've only got three lives though. Crap, this could be rough. easier way to dodge that shit. Okay, phase one is done. Oh, what? Where are we in the fucking pattern? Three of those. Stupid that is. Oh, I got stuck on the side of the wall. Ass that heat seeking bullet. Right, finally a password. Performer's Dungeon. God. I'm a bit worried about not having enough lives to finish this, even with passwords, because like three lives to get through could be quite tricky, unless I can find some in the levels. Hopefully get a bonus stage. I think this is the finale now. Oh no, what have you done? What have I done? My experiment is ruined. No more games, Dr. Dis. Where's the girl? The girl, she is the least of your worries. Plan B, however, is something that you should worry about. Even as we speak, your circus friends, Das Flying Pepperonis, what? Have been imprisoned in the performer's dungeon. You may have won the battle, but you will never win the war. They really didn't commit to the accent with him, did they? I 
like the music here. The only thing I'd say about this game is it started off like quite cute, but the last like couple of levels have been really dull, like aesthetically. Hmm. And that music level, interesting as it was to look at, it was kind of like why? of enemies now. I meet you actually, I'm just going to take a minute, that's some nice animation on those bubbles. Oh, f hey Jamesy, how are you? Oh, oh and I'm already down to another continue. I wonder whether the password would give me my lives back or not. Oh no, what have I oh, read that? I'm not feeling confident about this. Oh, the hitboxes on these crappy things. I don't know what's the better way to do it. Out of here. I hate Arrow's attack, that's my biggest problem with this series. I can't stand the attack button thing. Just let forward stranger back. Now you're looking at Sanities, oh god. Welcome to my world. Yeah, the other day I woke up and I had a terrible back, and I think it's just because, you know, I, I had a. I went to sleep. I slept an hour more than perhaps I should. Had a bad back all bloody day. I can describe my situation as like when being on a long haul flight, whenever I sit on this sofa, like I go through phases where I'm sort of comfortable and then I just get like, ugh, like now. Why do I feel like they're gonna hurt? Are they platforms or are they pain? Ugh, nothing. Fell off. Game's getting rough again. It's like Aero One, where the levels at the end, having continues, made no bloody difference because I didn't have the lives to get through. Only one thing at the bottom. Only three left. Six people have this in their bands. They do? It's all to stress you out. Is it even true? I wonder. I saw that when I was booking planes though. That, you know, they're like, only one seat left. I'm like, oh good god, one seat? Oh. oh! This is 
annoying me immensely right now. Are the prices close to last year? No. It's ended up costing me more. Well. My mother, she's helping out. It wasn't too much more, but last year was it last year was expensive, so I don't really feel like it's a great thing. I want them to come down, not stay the same. You know, COVID was ages ago. Can we like get a little bit of normality back on the prices of planes? Right. So did I do all of that to get alive? I'm about to die. some health. Oh! No. I don't like these platforms. They dip really quick. return from the UK. I don't think you can. Like, by law. I think it's to do with international whatever. Like, you have to book from the country that you're leaving in. Because, although they did give me the option, I'm sure that they used to not even let you pay, and it used to, I thought you used to have to pay in the currency of the country you're departing from. As well. I used to have that problem in the past because I wanted to pay in pounds, but I wouldn't, wasn't allowed. But to be honest, I've paid in pounds anyway on the exchange rate, so it kind of doesn't really change anything. It's cheaper for me to pay in pounds though because the yen is so miserable right now. It would be like a month's a month wage if I was paying in yen. I mean, to be honest, in pounds it's probably not too much different, but I feel like I benefited a little bit from the exchange rate. Because I, I, I paid in yen, but I converted it from pounds. It actually did work out about, I'd say, I saved 30 quid by converting it from pounds to yen. Because they offered on the website to let me pay in pounds instead. And they reckoned it was going to be whatever, like says something. But because I converted it, it ended up being a little bit cheaper than they would have charged me. <laughs> Problem with the exchange rate is it can change so much, and you know, you don't get exactly what Google says. There's going to be a bit of discrepancy, and it's also whatever it's closed at that day. And then there's the bank charges. What is with all these new enemies? Oh. Stop. How many hits? No more of that, please. This game has got really rough. I'm just going to take it real slow. Why is that platform there? Do you know what I keep forgetting to do? I haven't been looking for secret walls. I feel like they've just disappeared. I feel like they forgot the idea. Oh, come on! that to I don't understand what that switch did it's 
Didn't get an answer, you're damn right I did. I had to pay extra to choose it though. Oh, do you know the worst thing is though? Like, you pay for the whole ticket, which costs whatever, and then you book your seat, and they want you to pay for your, each flight, so return, tic return ticket, there's like two planes. There's go in and change over, and then like, another plane. But you have to pay for each one. I haven't paid for the short leg, because it's only like an hour or two, so whatever. But you get to the checkout at the very end, you've done all of that, and then they say that there's a there's like a five pound fucking booking fee. I'm like, my god. It's not even an agency, this is like the actual airline. It's like, are you for real? Haven't you had enough? You know when you're paying like up to a grand and then they want a five pound to fucking book it? It's like bloody hell. Like employ me and I'll do it myself. You're back. Just disgust him. I mean, at that point, it, it starts to look like a small number, but I just, I feel like, have you not had enough? What's disgusting? Like, paying over a grand for a plane ticket, and them also charging you for the seats, like to choose your seat and all that stuff. And then when you finally get to the very end, they then also say that, you know, to pay with your card, there's like a five pound booking fee. Uh, why? It just, it, I just think it's disgusting at the end of all of that to then want even more. Like just take, swallow the fucking cost for God's sake. It's not Ryanair, you know what I mean? It's not even a budget airline. This is international travel, like long haul travel. First word I hear is disgusting. TGIF, yes, how are you, Fishy Ash? It's ridiculous. Well, it's the same with concerts and stuff too, but like, you'd think that they were a booking agency. It's your damn website. Why do I have to pay you a booking fee? How else can I do this? <laughs> going to struggle with these extra lives. It is absurd how much it costs now. It's doubled, basically, from what I used to pay. It's got to the point that if it wasn't for my mother's age and the urgency of wanting to make as much as we can out of the time we've got left to be glum, um, I'd probably skip alternate years at this point because it costs that much but uh, I don't ever want to skip a year because you never know Covid really made me drilled into my head that um, never assume you have more time you know never assume how much time you might have you never know when the world can just go to absolute shit whole concert thing is a scam oh concerts yeah that, that that's a right joke because there's no other way to get the tickets and then they want you to pay. Uh, what I hate is the whole, you can't even get a paper ticket anymore. you got to pay for a souvenir ticket. I think it's absolutely disgusting. I'm not even bothering with you. Shit. Oh my god. everywhere. Oh God. Do you all have to deal with the horror monopoly that is Ticketmasters across the pond? 
in the UK, yeah, we do. Don't, we don't have Ticketmasters here, I don't think. I don't book concerts here. Probably, like, I think you said with t Ticketmasters, is it's often it's their event and there's no alternative. So I remember going to see Lady Gaga in like 2010 and it cost ages, uh, ages, it cost a fortune and then you have to book it through Ticketmaster and that's, there's no other way to book it, it is Ticketmaster's event and then they wanted a, a booking fee. Oh my god. Honestly, the way that he, like, if I tap right, look how far he moves. It's so irritating. There's no micro pixel movement. So, like, even just trying to get onto the platform and. Oh. Live Nation, yeah. Recognise that name as well. Those enemies suck. You know, I can't enough with this game how terrible the attack system is. It's just fucking garbage. Especially when enemies have more than one hit. If they only have one hit, it's not a problem, but this whole, like, dive and bounce backwards leaves you incredibly vulnerable. It's better than possum. So's a lobotomy, but... Ah! Everyone say something nice about this game. Go on then. Tell me nice things about this game. Partner, I really saw Kraftwerk. 120. Yeah, that's a lot. Live music is a luxury now. It is. And you know the worst thing is like old bands that aren't like current, but they still cost an absolute fortune. Japan's terrible for it though, because I'd like to see some 80s bands that have been getting into 80s pop. It's expensive and also you can't even get the tickets. You need to be like in the fan club or something. But then to be in the fan club, you've got to pay money. We need that bonus round. We desperately need this bonus round to get these extra lives going. I like the character design. I do actually, yeah. Arrow's a good character design. That last cutscene, the cutscenes have been good, yeah. Start a cow, the kangaroo. I don't have a fan club. Expressive he is. The animation's good on this, but it's a, it's a late game. 95. Warning y'all now, we got we got a little bit of ads coming up in a minute. Shall I just set them off? I'm just gonna set them off. Wow, we've got that for off the go. Tell me other nice things about this game while they're going, and I'll read them out at the end. Whoops. Mm. 
I keep forgetting I've got a look button. I should probably be being a bit more cautious. Ah. I need to find that bonus. Less death spikes. Definitely. That's the best thing about it. The level design in general has been better. I'm only sweating right now because I've not got many lives. And it can be quite yeah. tricky. Wow. Like the walk cycle. I just, I hate his walking though. Like the animation is nice, but the spatial uh, like weirdness of it. Like he often go, falls off ledges quite easily. If you're holding forwards as you land, he'll just go, he goes straight off. It's because he's got a, like a little tap and it's, it's quite a big movement compared to most platformers where, you know, they, they move like micro pixels. It's also because he's got this weird momentum that builds up. But it makes platforming a bit tricky, especially because the jump also is finicky because it propels you forwards. It's very hard to kind of... I find it hard to land where I want to. <gasps> I don't know about the animation, I'm just jumping off the point of it. Okay, that was a weird game. He plays the checkpoints. It's like a weird shovel knife idea. Two, well, two rid of three. Now you end up placing them at the end of the level, not knowing, and getting annoyed. Oh, these pissing bats. They're so awful. I've somehow managed to miss the bonus area, I think. Yeah. UFO 50? Is it new? No. I, I mean, I saw that Mel, Mel Plays Games is streaming it right now, and I was wondering what it was. Until I saw that, I'd never heard of it. Oh God! Can you stop that? Oh my Lord. But kind of skim. Yeah, I'm keeping my spending right now. Although I am tempted to get something. I keep getting tempted to get Civilization on the Sega Saturn. Mostly because the copy I've been following, it keeps going on sale. But nobody's nobody's buying it, so there's no rush. I've not really I haven't bought anything for a while now. I'm really just... It's not even just I'm trying to save money. I'm literally just trying to, to live. <laughs> trying to survive. Let's keep getting slammed with bills. Because that, I mean, obviously, before I was stream, uh, went on a long break, if anybody was paying attention to the conversations, my tax thing has still not been resolved. I have just seen today that I'm getting a bit more money back. But it's not the money back that I necessarily want, because it's not a lot of money, but it's just a bit more than I originally got. But what I actually want is my health insurance and 
like council tax, whatever you call it, to go down. That's the thing that's killing me. It's it's double what I usually pay, and it's just draining my money. I'm hoping that it'll when it if it gets adjusted, it means that like at the end of the next like in next year, I won't like have to pay as much as a result but I'm getting concerned because nothing seems to be happened but because I've just got the notice to say that I'm getting more of a tax re whatever you call it a return maybe that means they finally calculated it but they took ages I mean it's like and I'm just supposed to keep paying all of this I mean I know it's partly my mistake but there's it's like is there not any sense of urgency I don't have all this money you know it's like they want me to pay, I mean, like paying 300, $320 a month or something on health insurance. It should be about half of that. It's just a number off the top of my head, but I don't have it. Don't do that. And then obviously I spent a bit of money. The last purchase I made was that chair, which is what has also had got me down because it cost like 20,000 yen, which is about like $200. And I can't return it. I need to try and sell it, but I was presuming somebody wants to buy it. I've really been spending on fun stuff. I think the last games I bought. Are you talking marketplace? Do yeah, but I mean it's just like I said, it's presuming there's a buy, there's somebody that wants to buy it. So. And it'd have to be pickup. I'm not paying for delivery. got one life left. These little mole things. Oh my god. Oh, I've got flame power at the minute. Deja vu. <laughs> what is the point of this? problem with all these kind of platformers though is you know when they get this difficult like I don't mind replaying these games but when they're this like much of a hazard there's like no alternative than just like taking it really really slow and it just 
that's it's not so drag. I'm like dreading every single movement. Oh my god, the platforming is so hard. Because he always step moves forwards. I got no continues either. So what does that mean? I love how the music just carries on. I wonder what does the password store? Is that my correct password? Okay. It hasn't been rough the whole time though, it's just suddenly got difficult. But you know if it's going to be like Aero 1, this was the problem with the first game too. Because the last levels were so nasty, even having like continues. The first game didn't have a password though, but like three lives isn't probably enough to get through. And it's like you might be better off just restarting the whole game because there was so many lives to get at the start. I just didn't know how to play it. But like, tonight I had 13 lives, but then I got to this boss and I didn't know what his hitbox was and it took me ages to work out what to do and I pissed away like 9 lives, you know? I could, I could have those right now, which would make this a lot more chill. But the, ga and the game is just getting rather nasty now and there's, no, there's not many extra lives to get. These little things are awful. They're so hard to like hit and not take damage. And like, this was a big problem in the first game. It was really hard to hit the enemies without colliding into them. Because, you know, once he comes out of his spin, you'll just take damage. I really do think this like dive bomb attack is terrible. Like just jumping, jumping on their heads would be much better. Not having to dive into them. And the fact that some of them take four hits. I've just got to play this cautiously and try not to... Whoops. <laughs> try not to... Uh, whatever. Why can't you get killed? not too bad really. I think my main problem is also that I kind of just want to finish the game and not really have to replay the game but if I was like to play this properly like you know as a kid back in the day or whatever I would just start the whole game over and do better but I kind of can't be arsed to do that. <laughs> I, don't, I also don't want to do those lab levels again they were pretty drab but you know if you know where all the bonuses are on the lives and stuff you can probably get through with lots of stuff. Nice of us, well, okay, he's making noise while digging. Yeah. It'd be nice if this had a bigger hitbox. Right, 
Well, here's a chance. I want the life, though. Oh, fucking hell. There we go. I can go back in and get the hell. Oh, for fuck! Oh. Like trying to hit moving targets like that with this stupid diagonal dive attack. Just janky. The walking is a pain in the arms. You have to just remember to let go of the D-pad, otherwise he'll land with a, with a forward step. Like that. And it's a right killer. Because you know if you're trying to jump on that and you hold the D like that, you just flip off. I've already let like I let go as I land, but it's too late. He's already moving, so you got to you got to just let go of the D pad if you, and land in a drop. Oh my god. I hate the fucking attack. <laughs> See, that propels me forwards. Yeah, it's weird. No, it's weird. This is weird. Look at it. If I land from above, he'll land with a straight drop down. Do you see what I mean? But you know if I diagonally jump through the platform and only just clear it, he'll step forwards. This is me like, I'm not going to press the D-pad at all. And look at the difference between this and then this. No D-pad pushing. Why is he walking forwards? Why? I did not touch the D-pad. But that's the thing that's making me fall into stupid fire a lot. No D-pad. If I can land on it. Like that, that. He's got this weird momentum that's happening. Because he's still moving forwards from the somersault jump thing. Because it's like that as well. You get this weird momentum. 
makes it frustrating because I need to do it to get up. And sometimes he walks forwards and sometimes he doesn't, depending on how much I clear the gap. So it's like here, I want to not land on the fire bit in the middle, but sometimes he walks forward into it. It's annoying. It's a, it's a big floor. even bothering with those things. I hope I've got all my continues back. I don't even know where I got them from, if they're default or what. That's the end of the level. Five lives, that's not bad. I suppose the worst case scenario, I, don't, I probably don't need to redo the entire game. Maybe I could just go back to like an, an earlier level where it's a bit more lives, but... So there's a lot of lives on the snowboarding levels, but then again I died a lot on them too. Hector's deal. Where was all those letters that I missed? I felt like I covered everything. There must have been secret walls. Thing is though, there'll be a boss at the end of this, presumably. If I have to redo the whole act if I don't. <sighs> that seems like actually impossible to clear. You absolute shithead! How do I not take damage from that? He's blocking the whole corridor. Check for secret walls. Oh my god, you know another thing that's really annoying is if when you're trying to jump off a platform like that, and if you're slightly like falling off it as you press jump, it just does the somersault dive thing instead. Of jump. Ah! Why do I take damage off you? Fucking no! no! okay, ridiculous. Oh, I need to stretch a minute, my neck is hurting. See, there's a bonus thing that I really need to get on this level because the bonus stages often have a lot of extra lives in them. Look at where it is. An angel, an arrow, yes. For shame. Thanks. How are you? This is getting rough. Is it 
better than arrow one? Yeah, this is a lot better than arrow one. But it's getting really rough now. Because this is, I, think this is, I don't know if this is the last level or the second to last level, but it's getting spicy. It's got the same problem that Aero 1 had, where the end levels are really difficult, and with the continues that you have, only giving you three lives is not enough. Because if, if I start the whole game again and play better, I could probably arrive here with like 30 lives or more. Would you like to chop off your arm? It's a lot better. Especially the earlier levels. I was having like pretty good fun with the first levels. I'm not enjoying these bits though. I'm having issues. The, the, the bad controls starting to fall apart now. The game is trying to be difficult and doesn't really have the controls for it now. This is what I need to get. I don't know how to get... Fuck off! Oh my god. Stop. How can I get over there? Need that bonus ball. Ah! Said the diving attack combat is terrible. If I get my continues back, I'll feel a lot better, but if I don't. See, I'm far away again. <sighs> Toss! Just Fucking toss. Whoa. Slippy momentum. How to get that? Ah, uh, those the hitbox for these flames really don't clear. I keep getting hit by the lingering one. Kind of tough to figure out. I have no idea. I'm not sure if it's like I'll get come around there at the end or something, or I suppose if I've missed it. There's obviously a secret passageway. I'd really like it, because it's going to have a load of extra lives in it. Is 
So there's something there. Oh my god. This stop. See how long it takes him to stop moving from when I let go of the D pad? Is there something in there? this anime. It is so irritating. You know, if I was to describe platforming on this, when it's like this anyway, it's like trying to thread a fucking needle when your hand's tired. <laughs> Diving! Stop! I'm just trying to jump on the spot. I'm not even touching the D-pad. Because the second he no longer has a footing, it counts as you... Because jump is B, and then when you're in the air, if you press it again, he'll do that. But the second you no longer have any floor, it registers as a dive instead. But that makes it so irritating, just trying to jump. Why I went for that food. Hmm. so cheap that you try and dive at them and they move out of the way. I may as well, I may as well die. <laughs> I'm not finishing the level with no lives and two hit points. I'm kind of curious just to know if I'm going to get my continues or not. Although I suppose I should, if I could try and finish the level, and I do have continues, it means I'll be able to continue from Act 3 instead. You absolute twat. All that shit there. Like, am I missing something? Like, what? What am I not seeing? I know the manual said that you can do this like dive down thing, and it will destroy things as well. But I've yet to see anything. Oh, do you know what? I wonder if you can block the fly, the, f the fire by pressing down. Bet you can't. See what's all that?
Whoa. Wasn't this just a shit dead end? I've done that. No, thank you. Oh my god! Just stop when I release the D-pad, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Shouldn't have to press right to correct his fucking walk. Not with and why'd you program tiny gaps when you can't have this level of precision? Did you move him first before you did the level? Oh dear. Right, well, that's good. I have two continues left. This is this is very, very reassuring. Because I don't have to do Act 1 again, just Act 2. I would rather not lose any continues though. Yet, I might just redo Act 1 because it's really not that bad. What do you reckon? I want to find this bloody bonus area though. It feels like I'm going around in a loop though. So I'm not sure when I'm supposed to find access to it. I hate these. They just make me want to like shake my hands around in frustration. <laughs> like you know, that kind of frustration you get when you when you're trying to make like a house of cards or something. That sort of like tension in your hands, where you just get like, oh, I've, I have like I have no patience for things like that. It is looping round though, because there's the slopes. Mm, I think I'm just going to restart the whole act. Why does that have to be s the flame have to be so high? You can't even clear it without doing a big dive. You know, unless, unless my thought, maybe those switches are opening more than one chamber. So like maybe that's how you get access to the secret bits. Like after you flip the twitch, the, the twitch, <laughs> the switch. If you go back, maybe not then. Oh, I'm just gonna redo the whole the whole stage. I think. Let's see if it's in the ramp. That might have wiped, wiped the password now. Oh, you be Password accepted. I had all these other games planned for tonight. I thought this was only going to take me like an hour. You know what? Looking at that, 
Almost three hours. I'm glad I didn't push through with this last night. Can I try and play this at six in the morning? I could lose it my shit. So where's all the letters on this level? Because I missed loads. I only found one of them. There's four. And that could potentially net me an extra life if I could ever find them. See, what's that down there? in all this like how do I get in there this dive is, is such a dive Oh, get off it. Oh, my God. Any visual... Yeah, there's, like, nothing. The early levels, I felt like... I don't really remember visual cues, but just... I was breaking the water. Have you found out how to get that bonus? on the first levels I feel like I was just jumping into walls and they were always breaking but nothing seems to be breaking on this set my soul so was it at the start of the level or is it much later like is it when I first see it Beginning. It's just a little bit from where you first see it. Okay, I'll have a look. I'll have another try then. As long as I know this sort of rough location. Ah, oh, pest these damn flames. There's like that tiny spot that still counts as a hurt box. It's just stupid. That's an extra life gone. 
See, I just don't understand. Where's all the shit in this level? See, there's another thing there. What is that? Like, why can't I... I feel like I should be able to break a wall. There's just nothing going on. Keep seeing all these hidden chambers. No idea where they are. Others of the chambers. Is it not just breaking the wall? Oh, there's one. Finally! So that's what I've been looking for the whole time, but I just feel like nothing was ever working. There's a D. Oh, it was an O. There's an extra life over there. even <laughs> imagine Mario was this like shitty trying to kill things good god shouldn't be this hard to just jump and hit a fucking mole no Well, the other levels have had breakable stuff, but I just haven't been able to find any on this level. That was the first one I've found. The earlier levels, like walls and everything like this, you just hit it and it would just go boom, and you go through. It's like what loads of it was like. What's that? I don't even know what that is. I don't remember. Is that a continue or something? Let me check the manual. Does that have it open? I don't know what that is. Is it good? No, oh, is this the part where Sega Retro's not working? What goes down? Can't check the manual because it's not loading. Oh wait, I've got it on my computer actually. It's not by breaking then, what is it? I don't understand what this item is. I don't recognise it in the manual. 
Oh, it's the exit. It's just not appeared yet. That's what it is. Oh, that's... Why would that be a thing? Oh, my God. But that, how are you supposed to know that's so shit? <sighs> that is ridiculous. So there's an invisible wall, but it's a sliding wall. That is stupid. I've used the slide move loads, but usually you can see, you know, you're sliding under something. That was a stupid invisible wall. That's so cheap. Oh, that really makes me mad. So I need to just start sliding into every wall. What is that for? When have I been here? Oh, I can't believe that. Or isn't there one over here? Let's try that. Oops. Oh my god. This headphone cable keeps getting stuck between the sofa cushions. Is it this way? Oh, I can't be asked to go back any further than that. <sighs> but wait, wait, there was one up here, wasn't there? Was this where the... Uh... Bullshit. Well, there's the A. Honestly, there's no visual indication that you should be able to slide through that. Well, it's often been a requirement to use the slide. There's usually a gap and you need to go through. It's in the manual that you can do it. So the, the, the technique is not a surprise. But the fact that they've, they've made invisible walls be a gap, you wouldn't think, oh, maybe I can slide through that wall. It just is a wall. Especially because most secret walls that I've discovered in this game, and there's been loads of them in the early levels, they were discovered by diving into them and then it blew a hole in the wall and all of a sudden none of the walls are exploding but apparently I can slide through them. Okay. It just feels a bit out of the blue and stupid. I hate these things, honestly. So trashy. What else 
else have we got? And the level design was quite good early on because you tend it sort of led you into the idea of the, there's a secret wall there because there'd be a random platform and nothing there, you know. Come on. See, like that, you would think that you could just dive through it, but I guess this is another slide. I mean, once you know, you know, but when you don't know... I'm thinking, do I need to come down from above, or... Or what? I mean, let me check. No, I don't think... Just check the manual before I start really criticising. Let me reread what it said about the slide. Because I don't like criticising games when it does say in the manual and it's just your fault. To get under tight spaces, Aero can use his slide technique. No, so it doesn't mention it. But what it does say about the drop drill which is what I thought. It said the drop drill can be used to hit enemies, blah, blah, blah. It could also be used for locating secret floor blocks that can be broken through, which is what I've been doing. And the drill, he may drill in all sorts of directions. Oh no, it doesn't actually say there, yeah. But, but yeah, the, the, the power drill thing tipped me off to the fact that you can destroy walls, but it doesn't say anything about sliding through walls. Well, I mean, once you know, you know, but it just feels it's just a bit annoying when you don't know. See, that's what it is. Well, I still missed some of the letters, though, didn't I? I've got five lives now, though. Okay, I managed to clear him. See, this will be another then, isn't it? for every every little nook and cranny now. <laughs> See what's that then? Am I supposed to be able to roll under that? Wow. More over there as well. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ah. Have I been through that? There's a hole. that there as well. Oh, let's kill this first. I think there was an energy power up. Oh shit, that's the wrong one. So, it must, I don't know, do the other side. Presumably, it's right here. Whoa! There we go. The bonus! Lovely. for that. Hopefully the bonus level is going to have lots of nice lives. See this looks like it should be a secret wall if it was on another level, but it's not. That looks like it could be one too, but I don't I wouldn't I don't know how I'd get the momentum. Oh like that. I don't know if I care though to get these AERO's because you, all it lets you do is try that magic cups bonus stage, but they're kind of really too difficult at the, at the moment to win a life on. Oh, 
first cure is gonna try every well there I know. I just take damage, oh my god. Okay, there's a visual cue there, you can see the crack. So that's better. Is that it? I mean, it's health, I'll take it. See, that's why I was able to jump through the ceiling there before. Can we stop with booby trapping shit with these tiny little moles? Stop diving! So sneaky, those things. God, they really despawn off the screen, like, so quickly, like, where the, they no longer have a hitbox. some of this. See, oh, why? <laughs> Six lives. And a potential bonus round. These damn moles.
I wonder if this has actually got something up here now. Yeah, it does. Health. Oh, what? I thought it was supposed to be a jump, not a dive. Oh, I can go back, though, and get the health back. there just in case they need it in a moment oh this is where I got before wasn't it oh what literally can almost barely clear that wall of fire that they throw I guess I could go back and get the health. I'm not sure it's worth the risk. Slow and steady, as long as we can get our stock of lives up, I think we can finish the game without needing to redo the whole thing. Unless the last boss is an absolute arse, which a lot of games do love to throw at you. Oh, piss. Oh. Why can't I use the look button on this platform? Paid back dividend. It is on this level, yeah. That's why I'm so annoyed. Because it's not really. I don't think it's really been a thing. Maybe there was one or two in other levels of what I didn't know, but. Destroying walls was the main game, and then all of a sudden it wasn't. Where am I going? Not that way. Oh, there. I'm tempted to try and get back through and get my health. Let me get back to that chamber. To be honest, it wasn't even learning about sliding through walls, it was just learning that an invisible wall was a small gap. Because the, the lab, I don't know if you saw the lab level I was on before, that had loads of things to slide under. 
but they were visually obvious. Oh, there's a health there. Could be far back, but it's, uh, it's a, it was worth the risk. This isn't even the right way. Every life is precious. It's got to be the end soon. There we go. Bonus stage. I hope it's not a horrible bonus stage where I keep missing everything. Hundred percent. Seventy-five. I get an extra life for having a good overall percent. Next is deal. Oh, we missed an A. No deal. B, pick up found, play bonus act. Yes, let's do it. There's a life. See, one of the very final bonus levels in Arrow the Acrobat 1 that I found, it was like this obnoxious bouncing level, but it had something ridiculous like 40 extra lives and all something. It was absolutely bonkers, but it was <laughs> like such a game changer. I'm sort of hoping that we're the same thing happening here. Lovely lives, feeling good. So I think I'm one of my my final run of Arrow the Acrobat One. I think I walked into like the final act area with like maybe not even actually maybe not because I think I pissed the load away on the stupid log level, which is like got tons of instant death. But I think I ended up with like 70 lives or something. But the final boss was like really rough, so I used a lot. That's good. 15 lives. That's feeling nice. Better than three. Act three. This is this the last level? I can't even remember. So there's one more after this. Still not loading on my phone. I think this could be the finale. They're everywhere now, these bloody walls. I mean, at this point, it's barely even like a secret. It's just a given. Every, every bloody wall is going to be a slide.
But I shall look and do it for the potential extra lives on offer like that one. another. Oh god, instant death things like that. I bet that kills you. Do you reckon that's something? I've already been over there. Hmm. I don't think I care. I've got 16 lives. <laughs> That was a bit close. Wow. Ooh, they changed the colour. See ya. Ouch. Ouch, 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 ouch. Yeah. Every bloody wall. How did I not get the one on the other side then? So I heard somebody said that the Super Nintendo version is harder and I'm wondering why. I wonder what makes it different. I also wondered if the Super Nintendo version of Arrow the Acrobat 1 is actually better. So I wonder if some people seem to like it, so I'm like maybe they played the other version. Oh, 
I feel like a lot of people like this game though. I can see why. It's really not terrible. It's just it was starting to get a little bit frustrating, but some of that's also I don't know the game. I'm... The pressure's on. Like now I've got 16 lives, I feel a bit more comfortable in the game, and I think I'm starting to get the hang of how to deal with some of these chumps. <sighs> Except you. I enjoyed the first stage. I didn't really care for that snow level. It seemed like three levels of snowboarding was not, not, not great. And then the ice level after it was good. Why is this doing nothing? Maybe there's some other mysterious mechanic that I have no idea I can do in the game. The music level was alright. I don't really like the, the lab laboratory levels, but every game has levels you don't like. these levels. they got obnoxious enemies and also it's just just boring. But how interesting can dungeons really be? I shouldn't have done any of that. I should have just gone past it. I was thinking if I can kill him and then I'll go and get that health, but I could have just not even bothered. My civilization fan. Oh, yeah, I love him. Civilization 2 is my, my civilization. I was just saying earlier, I was thinking I might get civilization on the sun. see what it's like. It's a Japanese exclusive version, sort of based on Civilization 2. There was a console port of Civilization 2. It also came out in Japan, I think. But, but Tinsera is playing well. Tinsera plays Civilization 6, mostly. I've never played 6. Maybe plays 5 too. I don't think I've played 5 either. I've played 1, 2, 3 and 4. I played so much Civilization 2 when I was younger, so we had it on the PC. And then in my uni days, I played so much Civilization 3. It was, it's very addictive, though. I was watching Tarweegi playing Civ 2 as well. It's, it's very nostalgic, all the music. It's very good, it's just, it's like if you've played Stardew Valley, it's very addictive and it's very hard to stop. What's for Civ games never played before? But I didn't really, like, I, I haven't bothered with Civ 6 because I just don't really like the way it looks aesthetically. I like the top down simple view. It, look, it looks too radically different from my memories of it. Maybe I should try it sometime, but. I might have to get that 
Saturn Civilization game. Give it a go. It's on PlayStation as well. I just I can't decide what I want it on. But I'm sort of sat and biased because it's a novelty. Playing anything on the Saturn is always a novelty. But yeah, it's, it'd be nice if it was in English. I don't. I think it's a unique Japanese version though, made by. Um, I think it's Asmic Ace that did it off the top of my head, who we know Asmic Ace from being the company that did like Veritex and QT Suzuki's Ringside Angels and the port of Super Hydrolide, because they have that little purple dinosaur. Oh, let me just check. Is it Asmic Ace? It's either that or like ASCII or something. Oh, I'm tempted to buy it. No, but I shouldn't. Asmic, yeah, Asmic did this. It's just called uh, New World Seven Wonders. Se no, New World Seven Great Civilizations, and that is the subtitle. And it's just called Civilization, but it's not Civilization One. It's like a weird console Japanese port of the idea of civilization using all the assets and stuff but I don't think it I don't think it ever had a western release that version because it's not made by the people that make civilization it's obviously been licensed it looks good and then I know that Civ 2 has console ports and you can get them in Japan as well but I don't think that one came out on the Saturn I think that was PlayStation 2 only my only issue with Civ 2 on the console is I don't think it has the same music and it doesn't have the the council people, FMVs, or the little motion captured actors that are real. And that's a huge part of my nostalgia. I didn't really play it on the console. My brother-in-law did though. I, I did see him play a little bit of it. Because he loved Civilization. Civilization 1 and Civilization 2, that's how I got into them. So I'm just going to move my legs on this sofa. Never got to that one turn more. It's just, it's the devil like that. But one of them, Daddy gave it back to me, so it was too damp. Came with it. it is, but you really don't need to read the manual. Was it Populous on the Mega Drive? Yeah, Populous 1 and 2 on the Mega Drive. You don't need to read the manual for Civilization once you sort of because it has an in-game tutorial, Civilization 2 and stuff, so you can just do it as you go. I I never read the manual. Because it's massive. I'd love to play it. Civ 2. I think I have it. Maybe I don't. Is Civ 2 on Steam? I have 3 and 4 on Steam. I think I have 5 as well. I think I bought them in an obnoxious sale. I mean, I had 3 years ago. I had like a, cra a cracked version of it or whatever it was. But when I was in Japan at one point. But I have bought it on Steam. I was thinking about getting the console versions of Civ, I think, 5 or 6. Wow. I'd love a console version of Civ 2 that plays the same as the PC version, but like I said, it's, it's based off Civ 2, but it just doesn't look the same to me. Like, the aesthetic is a bit different and stuff, and it's just, it's not, it may as well be just be like a spin-off. But yeah, I loved Civ 2. Civ 3, uh, or was it 4 where it started going hexagonal? Oh, do you know what? Maybe I will get that Saturn Civilization. It's only like 5 quid. Oh! Speaking of, do you know what I got? 
And do you know what I did get a couple of months back, Jamesy? I can't even remember if I put it in the Discord. I think I did. I am the proud owner of Cooler... Cooler... Can't, I can't say it properly now. Cooler World. Cooler... Cooler World. The beach ball game. I finally pulled the trigger on it. Came up really cheap. And I was just like, bugger it. <laughs> I've tested it out, but I haven't played it properly yet. I'll definitely be streaming that one. But yeah, this civilization that I've had bookmarked. I was gonna guess theme hospital. No, I need to get that as well. Actually, I should get that. That's 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 affordable. But cooler world, I'd have bookmarked for forever. But I was just being really not wanting to spend too much. And it and uh, you know sometimes you can tell too like it's not selling so I feel like I can be patient with it because people will list it and it just sits there for forever so I'm just waiting for the price to go down whoops I've basically been doing that with this civilization because there's it's around a thousand yen. I kind of want to pay a bit less. It's also because the copy that I've been looking at, I'm not sure if it's very nice condition. Massive price cut after you order. Oh my lord. That sucks. I'll post it in the Discord, the, the civilization I'm on about anyway. Later, I'll put a video in. There was only three left and six people had it on their watch list. Wait, for what? <laughs> cooler world. It's in their basket. Oh, you've set me off now. I, I, I think I need that civil. I have, I have um, account balance on my mail, ma 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 carry. I never had to bloody say it. Mail carry account left over from eight because I had to get a refund on something a while back, and so I've just got the cash just sitting there. And I haven't bought anything for ages, so I think I might just have to pull the plug on civilization. I'm literally thinking about it right now. How much is it? I just don't, I don't know. Do I really need Japanese Sega Saturn Civilization in my life? Or do I need to just... Should I just buy a very nice takeaway instead? <laughs> I haven't had takeaway in ages. I'll sleep on it. Or maybe at the end of the stream. I think it's also just because I can't decide if I want it on the PlayStation, but Saturn's always more fun. Maybe I should just get New Civilization on the Saturn and Civilization 2 on the PlayStation. Wow! Thing is, though, would what would I do with Civilization on the Sun? Like, would I even bother streaming? It'd probably be the most boring thing to watch. Japanese Civilization. It'd be interesting. Like, if I was doing a console challenge, that'd probably be interesting because it's sort of like an unnecessary evil. But like, just I'm gonna play Civilization. It's a bit. Weird. Magic stars. You got Book of the Watermarks and the guide. You don't need a guide for Book of the Watermarks. It's really easy. 
X is deal, no deal. Oh, we get a password, that's good. I was thinking, like, I could probably just sell Book of the Watermarks, because I'm not honestly ever going to play it again, but it was it was a really nice stream. I did enjoy that. It was really relaxing. What is going on here? Mamma mia, it's Aero the Acrobatico. You shouldn't have come to this place. If they catch you, you'll be taken prisoner like us. Taken prisoner? I'm here to help you. Forget about us, Arrow. Uh, Ace. Silenzio, you big Italian meatball. What? Arrow, you must stop. Plan B. Performeros have from all around the world have been imprisoned, but why? I do not know. What is plan B? Very interested where this is going. Ace, I'm trying to tell you. What is it now, Shade? I know who is behind plan B. It's Natasha. Natasha. Who is it, Shade? Go on, tell us, tell us. Now let me think. Who are all these characters, though? It's it's the evil industri industrial Edgar Hector. I knew it. I knew it. Edgar Hector. But I knocked him off the top of his museum. What is the story? Must have been Zero, the kamikaze squirrel, who rescued him. It's Hector, all right. Only he would dare to imprison us, the uh, the three greatest acrobaticos in the world. But be careful, I heard that Zero is building a machine as part of Plan B. Whatever Hector is planning, he must be stopped, and you are the only one that can do it. You think of plan B from outer space. We're flying pepperonis. We'll, uh, we'll stay here and free the other performeros. Buono fortuna, Aero. Ciao. Bueno, whatever. You like to clown around, Hector, but this time your show is over. The show? Oh no, the show has just begun. My best spy, Batasha, was the opening up. Wow, what a shocker. As part of plan B, I sent her to find you so that you would follow her every command. Twist. Ha ha ha. Even Dr. Dis created Alter Arrow to keep you busy. While you were playing chase, my old pawn Zero finally completed his greatest invention. Take a look. What is it, a fun fair? What do you think? I'm very confused. I call it the Ector Engine. You may have formed my first plot, Plan A, to take over the world of amusement. But now it is time for the grand finale. Take over the world of what? Bollocks? As my engine stops off at all the circuses, my men will take them over. I, Edgar Hector, will control all the circuses within the whole world. Such ambition. Plan B is unstoppable. Oh, I almost forgot. What shall I do with my little winged friend? I know I will invite you to ride on my new machine. All aboard for the ride of your life, or should I say the last ride of your life. What a joker. Hector's engine. Boss act. So music is a choice. Someone's enjoying that keyboard. Oh, the various clown music. Hey, Barface, how you doing? You caught me. I'm back. 
Ooh. Ow! Hello! Oh, we got 17 lives. Could you telegraph that that is a fucking hole? Oh my lord. I just thought it was a nice window with some hay in it. Scramble for your lungs. New jobs allow very little listening to. Oh no! I miss you. Badong. Oh, stop. See, real look, everybody. Would anybody assume that that is a hole with spikes in it? Or would you just think that it's a window and there's like some hay in there for some circus animal? Nonsense. Why do these balloons hurt? Oh, and that one obviously I had to destroy it. Wow. <gasps> what? deal with these bombs. <coughs> this song's pretty catchy. Someone's jamming out. The music's been good on the whole for this game. At least the, the enemies aren't respawning, but neither's the health. Arse. Even killing me. Uh, shrapnel from the bombs. Crap. 
I wish the health pickups would respawn. Don't have to dodge the shrapnel on those second sets. There we go. Oh, I wonder if I could block it. Oh, you dick. momentum as well because the trains are moving. Ah! When does this end? Oh, the fact that they jump so that your dive goes under them is so pissing annoying. Might leave. Ooh, I won't leave it. leave these health power-ups in case I die on the map. Oh, that's fucking rude. Crap. Oh, yes, give me all them lives. Oh, 
Oh, this will be another boss. It's just weird logic where you can only hit the boss when you're taking hits. Oh, I've got an ad break coming up. I'm going to set them off now in case it gets more interesting afterwards. So presumably I can only hit him while he's moving, so that's fun. Oh no. Oh, you just give me health. Okay then. So I can hit him while he's moving. Oh my goodness. Does his health regenerate? Oh, he's giving me the health again. It gives me health. Wish the other bosses did. Regenerating health? Why is he regenerating health? He did. He's getting his health back. That's annoying. Honestly, these bosses, it's very janky to when you can and can't hit them. You can only hit him while he's moving. Not always, like you can't get more than one hit, it's like he gets iframes but it doesn't telegraph it to me that he's actually got them. Whatever. Like then I can't get a double hit in. <sighs> yeah. Time yeah. He does. Thank you. 
excuse me? Apparently I died. Is that the end or we got a phase two? We gotta do zero, because he's driving the truck then I guess. No? Press stop. Is it a GG? Tasha, there's so much stuff that's not been explained. Edgar Ector, the evil industrialist, has been beaten and his engine destroyed. Aero freed all the imprisoned performers. They returned to their homes and the circuses throughout the whole world. Plan B was a failure. What was Plan B? Oh, to take over all the circuses. Vector has been creating a new plan that is foolproof. Oh, goody forward to plan C. GG, thank you. Exa was last seen on the island somewhere off the coast of America. Watch out, Barface. But Tasha was deported to Eastern Europe. Good riddance. Once there, she set up her own alternative circus show. Zero quickly returned to his homeland. Which is where? Warned by Exa not to journey there, Zero has no choice. Someone is destroying the forests where he was born and he will find out just who is behind it. Wait, is this what leads into Zero, the kamikaze squirrel then? As the news spread all over the world, Aero became a star of a night. Why Zero just turned good? People travelled across the globe to see the world famous Aero, the acrobat. It's over. Goodbye. That was a much better game than Aero 1. Not... I give that like a a 7 out of 10. Based off the first 3 or 3 levels, 4 levels, I'd have given it an 8, but it just started to go down for me as the game went on. And I do think the boss is a jank. Iguana UK. Yeah, it's a, I think it's a British game, actually, isn't it? Who's Nigel Cook? I think I know his name. He, did he do other things later? doing stuff. Chefs love shark. Good lord. Vex. He's worked on new stuff now. It seems. Oh, I didn't read all this. Vice Chairman. Why are all these Japanese directors of Sunsoft Japan? So that's the connection there. Game Test Manager. Sarah the Acrobat, a British game then. How embarrassing. Some of these names look British to me. Iguana Entertainment. I oh, know it's an American video game developer, that's fine, you can keep it. Maybe they had a British division though.
<laughs> Apparently David Silla planned to port a remake the game for the Game Boy Advance in 2002, but then cancelled it in favour of original titles. Because the first one didn't do very well. I'm calling time on that. Wow! Wasn't that amazing? Aren't you glad that Aero the Acrobat is no more? 